Good Saturday now afternoon, everyone. Uh, hey, I just want to make a quick video for you, kind of explaining the steps of doing a pun and square. Um, and going through and grading the homework assignment that was due for uh, Monday, um, I've been noticing some things and I just want to make sure that I clarify some things before we start getting more difficult with some of our pun and squares. I know today's work is pretty simple when we're looking at the mono hybrid. And I just want to make sure that you guys see some steps as far as um, if you follow these steps that I give you, you can pretty much solve any pun and square as we're going to start to get more difficult next week when we start looking at what we call a dihybrid, which will have 16 boxes. Then we're going to get in, into incomplete and codominant and multiple allele and then sex link. And so the rules will be changing. But if you can follow these steps, it'll really help you to solve pretty much any pun and square that you're going to do. The first thing that I will say is this, is that making sure that you understand the vocabulary is really important, right? And if you need to, write a little note at the top of the page. You know, what is homozygous dominant? what's heterozygous and what's homozygous recessive. Making sure that you know what the alleles look like is a super important thing moving forward because the vocabulary is a really important part of this unit. So here's how I'm gonna go about solving this and I'm gonna kind of show you the steps that I use in order to solve a pun and square. And there's five steps and I'm gonna go through them with you now. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, number one is I'm going to highlight the parents. So what that means is this. So when I read this problem, right, I have got a homozygous brown dominant mouse that's crossed with a heterozygous brown mouse. What I want to do then is just simply go like this and highlight them. So I know then that really... All I have to do now is just focus on the highlighted parts. And I think that's the most important part is that when these word problems become too wordy, really trying to simplify what your mind is having to look at is super important in helping you. So just highlight then the parents. Uh, step two in the process, and we're gonna go here. Step two is write down the dominant and the recessive traits. Right, so if the dominant allele, as it says here, the dominant is brown. So I just wanna write down the dominant allele then is brown. The recessive allele is tan. So again, making sure I understand what I know what I'm working with really does help then. Step three, would be to write the cross. Now remember, the cross is just as simple as this is being crossed with that, and we use that cross as then by this X. So really now what we're doing is we're going back to our highlighted parts. So what you can do here to make this even simpler is you could write homozygous dominant up here, and you could write heterozygous above there, and it does help. Now we just wanna make sure that we put those in our cross there, so that's step three. Step number four would be then creating the Punnett square. Create and solve Punnett square. So if I get my pun and square here, again, remember I'm keeping my allele combinations together. I'm gonna write the first one on the top, that's generally how I do it, and the second one on the side, so that I'm making sure that I'm putting those together. So here's my homozygous dominant, here is my heterozygous. And then remember to move the alleles across. So this dominant allele comes down to these two boxes. This dominant allele comes down to these two boxes. This one goes over to each two. This one goes over to each two. And then fill that in. So we're gonna get homozygous dominant, homozygous dominant, heterozygous, heterozygous. Step five then becomes, uh, we'll go with brown. So step five would be to write down 
the genotype and phenotype ratios. So, and I, this is the part where I, some, I just am curious as everybody makes sure they understand what they know what they're doing in this one. Remember, we're going to go back to here and we're going to be now writing down the genotypes of our offspring. So we're looking at the four boxes inside of the Punnett square. Uh, Ms. Tupper did a great job yesterday of talking about then the order homozygous dominant first, heterozygous second, homozygous recessive third. So what I would do then, right, is I would write down two uh, dash or colon two dash zero. The next thing that I'd like for you to start getting used to doing is writing down the genotypes next to it or underneath it. So we're getting homozygous dominant colon heterozygous colon and uh, homozygous recessive. So that you're seeing that you had two homozygous dominant, two heterozygous and zero homozygous recessive. And then when we do the phenotypes, remember the phenotype is coming back to these two over to here. So again, what I would do is we're looking at the phenotype. So in our offspring, anything with a capital T would be then brown. So this offspring has a capital T, that offspring has a capital T, this one does, and so does this one. So again, what we would write here is four colon zero and we would then, the part I still want you to get used to now is going like this. So you can actually see then what the result is talking about. I think this is the part where we're adding in the genotypes down below and the phenotypes down below the ratios really will help you to understand some things moving forward. So again, there are my five steps. I've got my notes written down at the top. I've highlighted my parents. I've written down the dominant and the recessive trait. I've, cre I've created my cross. I've created my installed my Punnett square. And I have written down the genotype and phenotype ratios and labeled then what the ratios actually mean, which I think is the most important part. And I would love for you to start getting used to that. As you continue to practice these and do these things, you can maybe skip a couple of these steps along the way. If you're struggling with solving Punnett squares and doing them correctly, following each step, this is still how I solve Punnett squares. This is how I was taught when I was a junior in high school by Miss Winthorst in my genetics class. And this is how I've been solving Punnett squares for 25 years of teaching. I still do them the same way. Because again, if you do them this way, you're guaranteed in getting it correct. The most important step in this whole process is step number three. If you can write down the cross correctly, you will then set up the Punnett square correctly. You're going to solve it correctly and you're going to get the correct genotype and phenotypic ratios. If you get this part wrong, then this part automatically becomes wrong and so does this part become wrong. So making sure that you really know what you're doing will super make things much easier um, to do, especially as we go forward and we're working now with more complex Punnett squares. All right. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, otherwise, hope you have a great weekend and I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday of next week. Don't forget that you also have a homework assignment on Monday that uh, Ms. Klepper wrote and it's also going to be found then in your calendar for uh, Monday. So please make sure that when you go to your calendar for Monday, um, and I just wanted you to kind of see it here, I have added it in. So that will be the first. Then when you click on that, what you're going to see then is two things, genetic day four, right? You're going to see that one. It also says, please watch this video explaining today's content. Please watch that first. I put it there and I've also put it in. If you click on then that day, the order of says, watch this video for today's content. Miss Klepper made that video and then you're doing then the next parts. All right. So let me know if you have any questions or problems. Take care, have a great weekend, and we'll see you later. Bye.